that I want to get across is if you're going to implement application whitelisting with something like AppLocker, it is absolutely unnecessary to go all the way down to the individual file hashes <clears throat> on every single computer system. You do not have to go to that level and that, that, that extent. Also, I want to get across as well that with a lot of the advanced endpoint security products that are out there today, the most difficult thing to get around is not the security product itself and its automatic, uh, amazing artificial intelligence, whatever crap it is they're throwing at you. But what's really difficult to get by on a lot of these different tools is their whitelisting capability. And whitelisting is not something that you have to buy. Whitelisting is free. You can absolutely do it on your own. So let me go through a handful of slides and then we'll get to questions associated with this. There we go, get the redneck off the screen. All right, AppLocker bypasses. Yeah, um, a lot of the bypass techniques work, like run DLL32 techniques, ISR evil grade, uh, service exploits, .sct files. Um, I have a joke, bypassing never seemed to end. It just goes on and on, my friend. Sub-T started hacking and not knowing what it was. Now we'll just keep on hacking it forever just because it bypasses never end. It just goes around and around and around. Now, this gets into a problem that we currently have in the state of security right now. One of the problems that we have in the state of security is anytime anyone talks about doing app locker, and I've been part of these conversations, I inevitably will have someone in the group say, well, you know, you could just bypass that by doing this particular technique and that technique and this technique. And then all the people that are listening are like, well, AppLocker must be crap with the default configurations. And that's garbage. Honestly, if you actually implement AppLocker, just with what I just showed you, you're going to stop 95% plus of the drive-by attacks that hit your organization. Um, a lot of the ransomware is now done. It's not going to work. This is the vast majority of the attacks that your organization is going to encounter are going to fall into that category. And seriously, if we could just shut down 95% more or more of the attacks that are hitting your organization, can't we call that a win? Why is it everything in security has to be completely 100% foolproof? And I know this as a vendor because I'll have people, whenever I'm talking about Rita and AI Hunter, they'll say, well, I can get by Rita. If I have a backdoor that beacons once per week, your tool's not gonna detect it. Okay, you win? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Well, how exactly we're supposed to take that. And I think we need to get away from everything is garbage and if we can bypass it, it's crap. It's kind of like the old Saturday Night Live sketch, but it's Scottish, it's crap. And there's a bad accent for you. And we need to actually get down to some more realistic security expectations. And right now, all of your organizations have Sysmon. Right now, all of your organizations have AppLocker and it's free and we can push it out and we can do it effectively and it'll make an attacker's life that much more difficult. So some implementation principles before we actually try to jump into it. Start small, start with your own security team. Um, you could also start in audit mode. If you aren't actually locking things down completely, you're auditing to see what it would have blocked through a normal day. And then you can go in, you can easily create app locker rules uh, for the different publishers, code signing certificates to allow them to run. Roll it out stages. So start with your own security team and then roll it out to systems administrators or help desk and then roll it out to the rest of the techie teams, maybe even developers as well. There's no reason that I can think of at all where you would want to roll this out to every single computer system in one shot. There's nothing about that at all that is even remotely close to a good idea. And when you're working with the techie teams, when you're working with systems administrators, you're working with help desk, you're working with network administrators and the security team, you're working with people that are technically competent, at least I hope that they're technically competent, right? People in tech know things. And if something doesn't work and it says this executable doesn't fire, then you can have an intelligent conversation um, rather than talking with someone who's saying, well, the internet doesn't work. Well, what, what does that mean? Ah, the internet's not working at all. But I, I, don't, I don't know what it means that the internet doesn't work. And they have some weird streaming app that they downloaded on their desktop and they're running it on their desktop. And they're like, that doesn't work. It's better to work with somebody who knows technically what is actually going on. Thank you.